You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Teen Wolf After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Teen Wolf After Show. Hello, AfterBuzzers. We're here during another AfterBuzz TV after show for MTV's Teen Wolf Season 4, Episode 6, Orphaned. I'm your host, Kristen Elizabeth Snyder, and joining me, AfterBuzz TV host, June Lee. Hi, everyone. Our special guest this evening is Teen Wolf's production designer. Please welcome Rusty Smith. Hi there. Woo! Ooh, this Sorry. is the guy we owe all of the magic to. We, honestly, we Seriously. do. The sets Aww. change every season. How do you keep up? They're fantastic. I know June asked you mm-hmm. before we got started just what your favorite design was that you've done since the beginning of the show. Mm-hmm. Hmm. It's one that you haven't seen yet. Yeah, Ooh. I know. It's killing me. It's oh, coming up we, for the finale. So. Wait, can we get a clue? A little Is clue. it in Beacon uh, Hill? Can we get colors? Something. Uh, I'll give you, I will give you a clue. Okay. okay. You see it in the first episode. Okay. Okay. That's good. Wow. I'll take that. I mean, first okay. episode of season four. Sorry. Okay, okay. so we uh, saw it four, four, already. Four, you, you've already yeah. seen it. A version of it already, yes. But maybe we it's I can seen house. It. Do, have seen we seen it. I can house? Or for, did we see? No, I, can I think you know. Maybe when they they were in Mexico, right? Oh, uh-huh. ding, 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 ding. getting hot, and getting it was hotter. like the old no. church and whatnot. Ding, 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 so we might ding, be going ding, back ding. there. Oh. <laughs> Wait, are you are you okay to tell us this? I like he didn't did, tell us. I okay. didn't. I didn't say anything. All I said was ding. <laughs> okay, okay. I just don't want Rosie to get fired because we need you forever no, no. on the show. Jeff would never fire him. He That's is true. an important oh. piece of the puzzle. He really. All is. you guys are. I'm very excited because it's like an Indiana Jones set, mm-hmm. and I love that. I love how this season's been like an adventure, and I was mm-hmm. hoping we'd spend more time there. So I'm excited to hear that we're going back. Yeah. Where did you get the Indiana Jones reference? I mean, just like the tombs, and the, yeah. it just reminded me of that. Well, that's great, because I mean, that's what we were doing. Yeah, <laughs> so, I, I mean, God. that's just that's your work that gave me that reference. Yeah, so that's good. That just great. speaks volumes about you. For you guys at home, that opening song was Coward by Hayden Callen. Mm-hmm. And I love Laura Webb. You know, she was here last so week, good. the music supervisor, and all her oh, music yeah. choices, awesome. right? So good. The music yeah. is great. I tweeted that really song good. out earlier. It was yeah. Great. It's on my playlist now. How Thank does, you, Laura. Yeah. How does Jeff get all of you amazing, amazing people to work on the show? Like, how did you come on to Team Wolf? Uh, well, it was a. I was working on a, another movie. I was working on a Little Rascals movie, and it was the same producers. <gasps> oh, I love Little Rascals. <laughs> and uh, the producers, <clears throat> they they were partners, mm-hmm. and they won the uh, uh, what do you call it? The tax credit. And oh. all of a sudden, they had a hundred days to go. And so it was. I was on that project. I said, "Are you interested?" I said, "Uh, oh, let me watch the show." And I told my kids about it. My kids are like, "Oh, Dad, you gotta get that show. You gotta <laughs> do that." And thank uh, you, kids. <laughs> and I watched the pilot, and I was hooked. Nice. So, so what season did you come on? Uh, third. Oh wow! Yeah, he's only so, been there. Oh, yeah, that's why. But it's been it's been almost two years, and I've done thirty six episodes. Wow, so that's I've, fantastic. I've done more than any other production designer for Teen Wolf. That's Yay! awesome. So uh, you're, you're the only production designer I give credit to. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, well. So let's go ahead and start talking about the episode. Mm-hmm. Oh, I wanted to announce. I went to Comic Con. I went to the <laughs> Teen Wolf booth. It was amazing. And they announced that there's a season five. Yes, yes there is. 20 so episodes. You'll be working episodes. a lot. <laughs> yeah. It'll be, uh, it'll be uh, that first, the season that I did was the first time they had done 24. Mm-hmm. Wow. And that was quite a journey. I know. That's so, are they going to do the same thing where they have where they like take a break? A like a exactly, B. it'll be okay. a part A and a part B, or Perfect. two parts. Yeah, I think. Very cool. I'm happy about that. And we also found out that Dylan Sprayberry is going to be a season mm-hmm. regular. So I guess he's safe this season. Yeah, <laughs> because he's back. <laughs> he's back next yes. season. And somebody yeah. else, right? One more. Wasn't there? 
Um, they said there will be new characters. I don't know that they announced another one. But also, mm. someone asked what happened to Danny. Yeah. And Jeff said that we haven't seen the last of Danny. Yeah. So that's Well, good. everybody was freaking out, I hear. Like, all of the actors were like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I went to the Teen Wolf booth on the exhibition floor, mm -hmm. and I actually got to be transformed That's into so awesome. a Teen Wolf. Do you I, have a picture? I oh. tweeted the picture. I'll okay. tweet it again after okay, the show. Great. My eyes were red. I was doing a <gasps> little claw. Were you claw. An um, Yes. How did of they course. do this? Of course. <laughs> we had like this this photo booth set up. So you would take your, fo your photo on like the green screen. They'd put in a background, and then you'd do the after effects. You could pick weapons. You could pick like <laughs> oh change your gosh. eye color. That's it was so. so cool. Cool. It was my favorite booth wow, at Team I wish at I went. Comic Con. Oh, yeah, it's great. It was very Man, cool. I'm so jealous. So let's go ahead and get into the episode. So we open with Kate four weeks earlier in her car, and it looks like she got a mixtape from mm -hmm. the orphans. Yeah. And she kind of takes it out on this motorcycle gang that's nearby, thinking they know who the benefactor is, but it turns out they don't. <laughs> I think they were. I feel like they were also hunters. Yeah, I I feel like they very were very good. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think nice. they were also. I think they were like part of. Um, oh my goodness, the benefactors like, crew. I mean, it, not, no, no oh, I was gonna say Oriah's crew. Well, they're they're oh, maybe. they're assassins that are yeah. sent like uh, yeah, like the benefactor. Yeah. <clears throat> I think is what they're supposed to be. Okay, okay, okay. right. Yeah, I mean, I they were obviously somebody. after her. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So then we go back to the school with Scott and Argent, mm -hmm. and we find out that the police is looking for Garrett, and Scott's dad comes in, he's like, I'm sorry, I wasn't there the other day, and I, he somehow really knows about the orphans. This yeah. is all, like, very mysterious. Very, like, very why fishy. wasn't he at home? Like, he moved there to be with him, and he hasn't been really helping out with the case. Like, where has he been the past few days? Mm -hmm. And how did he already know about the orphans? Yeah, and what about the reaction to her weapon? Yeah, I am. I'm yeah. very. I'm thinking that he has something to do with all of this. Mm -hmm. It would make sense because he's like the character that we know the least about at this point. And when yeah. he comes in, it's like very mysterious. Yeah. So I'm suspecting him. But I wonder if he's. Actually after the benefactor, you know, and he just doesn't want everybody else to like he that there's like a mm -hmm. gap there. Like he doesn't know that they know and they don't know that he knows. Right. But they're both they're all going after the same person. Wow, that's really cool that you that, that's <laughs> funny. I, I because uh, the dad, uh, you know, uh, he kind of comes and goes mm -hmm. uh, a lot. And uh, and I'm trying to remember if he comes back. Oh. I guess I can't say. Mm, <laughs> I mm. Oh my god, you're such a great guest. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> oh wow, they found my picture! Oh my Thank you, Steven. That's so amazing! Yes, that was at the Teen Wolf booth. You they turned me in into Twilight. <laughs> you look like a vampire. <laughs> Why? Doesn't because I'm like pale. <laughs> Yeah, you, we need to see a growl though. Where are your teeth? I know. Uh, you're, you're too pretty. <laughs> you're too pretty to be a werewolf. You know what I mean? You're Thanks. too like classy and pretty to be a werewolf. You need to have like more of an animalistic pose. I mean, that's 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 all I had at the time. Uh, that's me as a as a teen wolfie. <laughs> I love it. I love uh, it. You're yes. like amazing. You could be you. on the show. I hey, know. let Jeff know. Yeah, uh, seriously. I'm up for it. I can wear the contacts. My teeth are already kind of sharp. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, so then we find that Scott finds this bag of money that he, but he tells Liam that he didn't find anything. Mm -hmm. And then later on, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. We see him counting the money with Styles, and whenever Melissa was kind of looking over her bills and the, the fact that the electricity was going to be turned off, yeah. he had this money under his bed and he still hadn't given it back. Yeah. And then we see that he did tell Styles about it, and they're they're uh, counting it in the end, and that's when they find another mixtape. So mm -hmm. I'm excited to hear what exactly is on these mixtapes. Because mm -hmm. this, you know, one that Kate received too, and now they, they got one. But it must have been it was in Garrett's bag, so maybe that was a tape that Forger. he was giving to someone. Maybe the benefactor sent it to Garrett. That's a good point. So or maybe finally, the benefactors who was sending it to Scott. 
Yeah, um, that could somebody. be. Maybe he would. He knew that Scott would get the money. Right, so right, I'm right. really excited to hear that tape. Yeah, it's really interesting because like everybody's having money troubles. Yeah. Like Lydia, Style, Scott. Now Jeff said that he wanted to do that because he wanted to take us back in time when people had human struggles yes. and money is definitely a human struggle. Yeah, and absolutely. he wanted to make the uh, supernatural villain this season more human, and so mm-hmm. he wanted to implement those human struggles. Mm-hmm. And and we're definitely getting that, and I'm mm-hmm. excited about that because he said, you know, humans can be just as scary as these supernatural creatures, and yeah. I think they're almost ser- scarier. Right. We're right. getting a lot more weapons, too, a lot more like, uh, <clears throat> you know, regular, wire, you know, yeah. well, like mm-hmm. also regular guns and stuff like that, mm-hmm. right, know, stuff right. that is more humanized. I totally, think. totally. So, June, do you think that Scott's going to give some money for to his mom for the bills, or and to Styles for his bills at Iken House, and to I Lydia, mean, or what do you think he's going to do with this money? I mean, like versus what give it to peter like who is i, I mean, mean he could turn it, it in was... it's police evidence mm, i uh, i mean that's the good guy thing to do that's like the scott mccall it? thing to do is, is turn it? it in why hasn't he done know. it yet why exactly. hasn't he done the thing yet? exactly right. i don't know i don't think it's i don't think it's quite that simple to say that is a good thing to do because he has responsibilities he has a pack to take care of he has styles lydia and his mom you know these are these are his family members you know what I mean? But I feel like he's very moral, and he knows in his heart that you're supposed to turn the money in. Everyone knows you're supposed to turn the money in. Mm-hmm. But obviously, I like that we're getting this struggle, because mm-hmm. that's a struggle we all go through. We have, we want to stay moral, but then we've got issues at home that kind of ask us to question our judgment sometimes, and sure. maybe uh, struggle with our values, and we're tempted to do things that we wouldn't normally, but out of necessity kind of changes us. Like the yeah. whole Breaking Bad, you know? Yeah. Well, I think also it's a, it's a statement also, though, about, you know, he really is the hero, you know? And, mm-hmm. like, when you see a hero, like, falter, it's much more interesting Definitely. than if he's, like, right. squeaky clean all the time. Exactly. Yeah. So I think you see a lot of that internal struggle. And Tyler also is such a... Uh, you know, they've all grown as actors. Mm-hmm. To me, even like doing like 36 episodes with him, I mean, he seems much more mature. Yes. Uh, right. Really cool. So then we get to see where Liam and Mason are out for a run, and Liam actually gets kidnapped by Garrett. And Garrett does this because he wants Scott to help him get Violet back, his girlfriend, and return his money. Yeah. But that doesn't go so well. We see that the Berserkers actually get to the vehicle containing Violet and Stilinski and uh, Scott's father before they do. And Kate yeah. and the Berserkers take Violet. I know. Why do you think that is? Because she she knew that they, they were they were hunting her? Yeah, of That's course, true. because okay. of the mixtape. Um, yeah. And the motorcycle gang told her that the oh, orphans right. were after her. That's true. That's Bait. true. She's bait. Right. Yeah. She's bait. Yeah, she she's definitely bait in that situation. And so then we go to, you know, Garrett or Liam was actually struggling to get out of the well. And can you talk about the well scene? <laughs> oh. So the well, here's a little bit of history on the well. Okay. Uh, Is it the same well from the ring? How did you know? Because I had this creepy, Are you serious? Creepy, How did you know that? I had this super creepy... I'm getting chills just thinking oh about it. Oh, my God. I hated the ring. And like, <laughs> oh, my God. Because it was scary, right? <laughs> yes. But it was just so... And, like, I kind of have, like, a photographic-ish memory. Wow. That's so pretty like, great. So it is from the ring. It that is. Well, what happened was uh, Universal oh. Studios was... <laughs> they were throwing out their scene doc. And wow. I... Uh, and it's very famous, very sad that it was mm-hmm. all going. And... I told the producers, I said, look, they got some really great, scary stuff. Please let me, you know, go there and, like, spend some money. And I found the well, and I was like, we got to have this well. And there was no scene written. This was all during the third season. Mm -hmm. And we had to get a crane. We had to get a special truck. We couldn't move the thing. Everybody hated it. They made so much fun of the thing. And then it finally showed up in the script, and we're like, yes, the well. And I thought because it was the ring and it would be scary that it would had some kind of karma. Why did everyone make fun of it? I think it did great in this scene. Why were they making fun of it at first? It's very hard to move around. Oh, okay. It's really big and it's mm. really heavy. Uh, yeah. It's it's uh yeah, it's a crane every time we move it. You have to get like a big piece of well, machinery and then we had to put it in water. Yeah. Which I is heard even you better. bought a kiddie pool, we right? We bought a kiddie pool. Wow, you guys know everything. This is great. We try. <laughs> we're fans. So. But I mean, like I think it worked. I think you're right. I think it did have a energetic 
hmm. thing, a connection. Cause yeah, I an felt energy it. about it. I it felt did. it. It was That's creepy, good. and I felt sad for Liam. Yeah. Was Dylan, like, nervous about working in this well? Did he find it scary at all? He's great. <laughs> I just want to say, that kid is an amazing actor. And also, he had to wear a wetsuit, because you had to be out there, and it had to be nighttime, because we had to shoot it night for night, because it was mm-hmm. too big to cover. Mm-hmm. I heard the water and, was warm, though. It wasn't cold. We we did keep it warm. But <laughs> uh, but still, as an actor, you know, they put up with so much, and they, when you're in the mm-hmm. water for, like, 12 hours, that gets really old. He had to be yeah. all pruney. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. I didn't yeah. see that in the shot. Yeah. But he had to have been. I saw him whenever they were shooting him, um, the falling down. So they were shooting him on, like, the green screen. That was so cool. Right. Yeah, we extended it. We Actually, there are, I don't know how many shots there are, but it was very uh, meticulously storyboarded by Russell Mulcahy. Actually, mm-hmm. he was like, I want this shot this way and this shot <laughs> that way. And we actually, for the scene where he falls back in the water, we built a miniature top. Mm. So it's, like, much smaller. Uh-huh. So it looks like it's, like, 40 feet oh, away from you. Oh, I see. That's really That's cool. very See these little tricks and tips. Well, we couldn't do a digital effect under mm-hmm. the water. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, what you'd have to do is you'd have to digitally put the water in and then have him fall on that. So we really put a camera under the water and a shot it practically. Wow. That's really cool. Well, we loved that scene. I'm glad you bought the well. Right. And the top part of it was really great. It's only two feet tall. Oh, wow. And we put it out in a field out in Topanga. That is so when so he funny. crawls out, he's totally acting like he's like climbing up out of the thing. It's but it's really only pretty. like a two feet. Oh, it's only two feet deep. oh my god, yeah. that is so he, funny. He totally oh, sells it. He's yeah. a great actor. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, yeah. we get that shot in the end where he's about to fall and he's been poisoned by the wolf bane, and so he can barely hang on. And mm-hmm. he growls, and Scott hears him, and he comes for him, and he saves him. Right. That was a great moment. Mm-hmm. Another sh- great shot of the well. Uh, <laughs> so then we see Argent and Scott team up because they want to go get Violet so that they could could figure out where Liam was to begin with. Um, and so they find Kate and the Berserkers. And, of course, uh, this is Argent's sister. So sad. Yeah, so we don't think that they're going to fight, but... Argent kind of goes berserkers on the berserkers. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I know, he, he just does. cannot stop firing. And, and I think that's, you know, the fact that he's lost so much, his daughter and his wife. Well, he's angry. Yeah. And, and you know, this sh- is not how he should be encountering Kate. Like, she should mm-hmm. be coming to be by her family member's side, not fighting him off. But in the end, we do see that she stops at the berserkers yeah. from actually killing him. Mm-hmm. They seem to have some kind of sibling issue. Though. They do. Yeah, they do. There could be they something have... buried deep there. They I, do. There yeah. is. I hope that we get that mm. family relationship on screen. Mm-hmm. We have six more episodes. We're halfway through it. Yeah. So we're. So I feel we're like only a, halfway. Wait, yeah. Wow. I don't know if you're gonna get there, but I just had to say, like, speaking of it. anger, I thought one of the best lines out of Teen Wolf, like in any season, was that line where they're saying, when you know a kid is angry, they either take it out on themselves yeah. or take it out on other people, and I was just like, oh wow. That's really, just like yeah. one of says that? When it is Dylan's that? in the well and he's thinking. Yeah, and and well, about he, what his parents said. Right, right, right. Liam is talking about you know what his stepfather said, I believe, and this mm-hmm. is something that you know his stepfather told him is that like you know when you when kids are angry, they either take it out on themselves or they take it out on others. You know. Wow. And that was that like great. that taught me something. You know yeah. what I mean? Like we, hmm. you know, and. We talk about that with Team Wolf all the time. Lots of anger issues. <laughs> Lots of anger issues. Yeah, yeah it doesn't yeah. help when you're trying to control that because you will turn into a Teen Wolf. Yeah. Um, we didn't have to get angry at the Comic-Con booth in order to switch. They just did some photo effects. <laughs> um, so then we get, you know, it's very ironic because we get that Argent sort of teaching Scott to be a leader here but if you remember in season one he was trying to kill him so I like that we got that little father son bonding moment because again Scott's father is not really in the picture he came back to be there for him but he's not I know where is he well now he's right the second he's in the hospital because the berserkers flipped their car right oh that's Right. right well actually technically he got another show Oh. <laughs> I don't know how much of that I'm supposed to say. No, it's just like, uh, but, uh, you know, it's funny, like television, I, it's mm-hmm. it's my first sort of venture into television, but things do change along the mm-hmm. way, and somehow mm-hmm. you have to, like, make accommodations for that. Yeah. Well, um, and also MTV is a newer um, 
it's newer in terms of like producing their own things. Yeah, their own like right. dramas. Right, and so and I've heard like there are contractual issues. You know, they can't like afford or not afford, but like they don't have um, longer contracts for their actors. So their actor, so the actors like do have a choice if they want to move on. Interesting. Which is what happened with Allison, of course. You know, but. Mm-hmm. You yep. guys are really savvy. That's great. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I think that we, it's safe to say my suspicions are probably then just to, due to the fact that he's on another show. <laughs> and yeah. he's probably not the one doing all the manipulation behind right. the better factor. Right. But you never know. Because we don't we don't see the benefactor yeah. yet. You know, it would make sense if he's a benefactor yeah. and he gets killed. And then he's leaving. And he's leaving. It would all come together you quite well. You heard it first at After Buzz TV. <laughs> there you go. And if you guys want to call in and contribute to the show, the number here is 424-256-1729. Uh, June will be reading some of your comments mm-hmm. later. You can tweet her at Miss June Lee. Yes, you can tweet MS underscore June Lee. Yes, and you can tweet me at Cinematic Escape. And you can even tweet Rusty. Rusty, let's give a shout out to your Twitter. Yeah. Roscoe E59. There you go. And, and we'll say those him. again later. Yeah, follow him. <laughs> Get the latest Teen Wolf (laughs) news. Um, Okay, so let's go ahead and start talking about whenever Scott finds Violet, she's already, it seems like she's dead. She's covered in blood. And we she saw looks poisoned. Yeah, and we saw Garrett also. It mm-hmm. looks like she was sort of tortured to death for yeah. information. Ooh. And we we saw the berserkers also kill her boyfriend Garrett. So those are two of the orphans who we actually knew were doing the killings. Killings are now dead. So I don't know who's going to surface now. That's also another orphan because that's who we knew were the orphans and who we were looking for answers from. And now they're oh, both that's dead. Interesting. They were orphaned. <laughs> they were orphaned. <laughs> yes, they were. Uh, um, um, yeah, they were. Uh, you know, I wanted her decapitated. I drew a great sketch. I'll oh have to send you gosh. a copy of the sketch yes, because please. because I thought that she should die the same way that she right, kept killing people. But right. it was a little, it was a little complicated. A little, we, we have yeah. some gore issues that we have to be yeah. very careful about. <laughs> Yeah. I can understand that, but yeah, we'd love to see that sketch. We'll tweet it Actually, out to the fans. Now that I think about it, I I feel like I don't know. I just feel like like the way that Papa McCall, you know, you know, um, Scott's dad was kind of twisting it in her that she was an orphan. Like I thought that was very kind of odd and strange. And like, would a would a father do that to a kid? Well, I think she has a pretty serious criminal record, and now you get <laughs> yeah, the impression also true. that he's been looking for them. Yeah, I think you know. yeah. like because she's been doing other things. Exactly, well, she's towns. been killing everyone in other towns. Um, other, other, yes, other towns, but not necessarily supernaturals. So actually, that's a good question. I don't know. Yeah, hmm. I don't know. They didn't talk about that. But um, so we find that Peter finds Kate, mm-hmm. and he actually tells her, "Hey, I'll teach you how to control your abilities, but I want power." And I don't exactly know what that means that he wants, but these two have very similar personalities, and I feel like they'd be like terrible as a team up. They'd be great as a team up, but also terrible for everybody else because they just don't care. <laughs> yeah, they are very similar. Yeah, yeah. And I kind of see them as like a power couple because totally. there was a lot of sexual tension going on in that mm-hmm. scene. Mm-hmm. And when, when she was like, "What do you want?" I was like, "Uh." Yeah. <laughs> he's kind of giving her a lot of looks there. I know, right? Yeah, but There's he's been saying he's, he's wanted power for many seasons now. Mm-hmm. And Jeff says that you know that plan sort of comes to for fruition at the end of the season. So hopefully we'll see just exactly what Peter wants. And if he'll get it, or if he'll be changed by finding out he has a daughter, which we, he still doesn't know yet. Or does he know? It's just Malia doesn't know. He knows he has a daughter. Yeah, he does. But Malia doesn't know that he is her father. So maybe And he also knows that Malia is his daughter. Yeah, so... But she doesn't know. Exactly. So once we get that... So exchange. that hasn't changed him. No, no. But but maybe once they do the father bo- father daughter bonding. I don't know. Peter is not. <laughs> I don't know how much changing Peter is gonna get yeah. to do. Yeah. And you know maybe awful. Peter's the benefactor. Yeah. He, yeah. I mean he could have stolen his own money. <laughs> what are those insurance claims? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let's talk about Lydia and Styles. It was great to see them on screen again because uh, still Lydia. We just love them as a couple, Mm -hmm. and we haven't really seen them on screen a a lot together. And Mm -hmm. they actually confront Parrish, and they're like, hey, 
you're actually on this list. Yeah. And Do you believe that Parrish doesn't that know? That he doesn't know why he's on the list? He seemed kind of shocked. There's uh, there's more to Parrish yeah. than one yeah, thinks. Yeah, that's, definitely. That's probably all I can say. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. yes. I think he probably does know. He's a cop for a reason, but I think that he's obviously a good guy. Yeah, well, I mean, Jacob Slaughter on YouTube said that, you know, Parrish said last season that he felt, quote, unquote, drawn to Beacon Hills. You know, oh, there you good. go. So that's good. I know we have the most amazing, like a team. beacon. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So they parish helps them get to Iken House to talk to Meredith, and Meredith can't help because she says the benefactor wouldn't want her to. But when she screams, like Lydia's ears kind of I bleed. Mm -hmm. That was strange, and I wonder if Lydia will learn that she also has that power to scream so loud that, you know, she makes people's ears bleed. I don't know. Mm. Um, mm. And then they were trying to think of all the dead people's names, and they put those in, and it didn't work as the cipher key. And yeah. then they thought of maybe people who aren't dead yet. Yeah. And they type in Derek's name. I know. So, what do you think that means? Because there was a little bit of, was there a little tension between Derek and Lydia ever? Not really. Uh, it was more no, Peter. It was Peter. Yeah, no, I think, uh, you know, if Derek, he's losing his powers mm -hmm. because of what Kate did. Yeah. So he's becoming a human. But then in this episode, we saw Peter claw him very deep. And mm -hmm. we know that when Kate was clawed very deep, that's what turned her into a were jaguar. So well, I don't it know. Was, it, wasn't Kate, it, it wasn't Peter. It was um, Liam, wasn't it? Who? That, that clawed um, Derek. Is that the scratches on Derek yeah. that he heal, I, heals? Yeah, Who I, did yeah. those? I thought that was Liam. No, 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 I'm sorry, not Brett. It was Brett. You think it was Brett when, right. when he was holding him down? Yeah, that could and be. Yeah, Brett went yeah. crazy. Right. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Right. Okay. And I'm not sure, okay, so Brett's part of that other pact, the Buddha pact. I love that, by the mm -hmm. way. I love this whole the Buddhist, Buddha like, yeah. Buddha pact. Yeah. Before we it was so awesome. <laughs> yeah, before we talk about the Buddha pact, though, what do you think's going on with Derek? Do you think since he got clawed, I mean, that's how I thought he could possibly die, because he was losing his powers, becoming human again, so it would make sense that if he maybe died, but then came back, maybe because of the claw marks, he'd be a wolf again, but he died think, as a human. I don't know. What do you think? I don't think those claw marks meant that he was dying as a human. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm saying he was a human. Yeah. He was becoming human because he's mm -hmm, losing his powers. Mm -hmm. But do you think the fact that, I mean, we zoomed in on those claw marks for yeah. a reason. Yes. I think it's to show that he was healing. He healed. I didn't see that he healed. He did yeah, heal. he healed. But just barely. Yeah, so, yeah, he you're healed. right. He's getting okay, weaker. So yeah, but he weaker. couldn't yeah. do it. I think you know. it was I think it was more to show that he, he's healing, but mm -hmm. it healed slowly. Okay. That makes sense. Thank yeah. you for clearing that up for me. Um, okay. So, do we think that Derek's going to die? Well, I mean... I feel like the fact that his... <laughs> can't, Rusty can't say it. I can't I think, say. I can't say. I think the fact that his name sh was... I, I'm, like, just trying to... I feel like they're teasing us because Scott says no one on this list, no one else dies. I'm going to save everyone. So I think that Derek will obviously get in a situation where he could possibly die, but I think Scott will save him because we already got that scene earlier uh, this season where Derek's sort of saying to Scott, you know, you're doing a great job. And yeah. I thought he was saying goodbye. Yeah, me too. That's what I thought he was saying yeah, when he when that of, scene. Yeah. I think he's like saying, uh, you know, I know what's coming. And yeah, it could be. Like could have been a goodbye scene. With, like Alice and her dad. You know what I mean? We've had. Mm -hmm. I feel like we've kind of had that happen when people are leaving the show. Like we get that say, last scene. Yeah, exactly. You get that last scene. You know, and that scene felt heavy to me. That scene felt. I felt something in that scene. So. Oh, the scene with Derek and Scott. Yeah, yeah. You're right. That was yeah. a really good that scene. Was, I, have to say, that was I the most that was powerful. Tyler Hecklin said that that was Heckland. like maybe one of his favorite scenes he's ever yes. shot. He said that at it Comic Con. Showed. It showed, yeah. Wow. So we get the lower third of this list, and we find out that Malia and Meredith is on it. And of course. Lydia immediately calls Iken House, but it's too late, and Meredith has hung herself. Do now, you do think we? She hung her I know that's what I was gonna ask. Do we think she actually hung herself, or do we think that's you know the benefactor or someone else? Oh, by the way, Aaron Hendry. Yes, so the doctor awesome. at Iken House. 
Aaron Hendry. What's his name? Brunsky? Brunsky. Dr. Brunsky. Oh, him. Oh, Aaron! Aaron. Yeah! Aaron. Awesome! So oh, awesome. What if what he's the benefactor? Actor. I know, he's such I a brilliant actor. But he's a really good, skeezy, bad such guy. Such a good guy. Yeah. yeah. What he's, if he's the benefactor? He could be. He's coming on, I think, 409. So in Yay. three weeks, we'll have okay. him on our show. He's Maybe the Nikitsune. <laughs> oh, I know, but you know that, right? Yes, you know yes, we do know. Yeah, that. he was what a if, new what if he was But just we never so saw good. his faces in exactly. New Gitsune. Yeah, so he could play he could another be. bad guy. Yeah. He played an awesome guy. But guy. because I only, I feel like because if Meredith. Meredith didn't hang herself. It had to have been somebody inside Eichen House. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that's like, a good call. Yeah. Well, it is a dangerous place. Mm-hmm. It's our Eichen Arkham House. Asylum. And mm-hmm. we did see a hanging there. Styles did the very first time he went in there. Yeah. That's so, true. Happens a lot. Yeah. That's true. Uh, so then we also find out that Malia's on this list, mm-hmm. which she was the only one up to this point that really wasn't. Yeah. And now she is. So that's scary because I love her and I don't want mm-hmm. her to go anywhere. But I don't, I don't think, think she's I don't think this anywhere. is gonna frighten her either. <laughs> I don't think she's going anywhere. No. So we f- we saw that Brett was poisoned in the beginning, and I like how like Deaton kind of cuts open their chest to let yeah. the poison out. That's that, a cool thing. Yeah. That's yeah. really cool. And Need then Pulp Fiction. Yeah. And so we get right. we get this uh, oh Pulp Fiction with the adrenaline needle. That's my favorite part. It's really hard to watch, but it's like whoa, right? Don't do whoa. drugs, guys. Seriously, and don't do drugs. If you're thinking about doing drugs, go watch Pulp Fiction. <laughs> I don't care how old you are. <laughs> That'll stop you from doing drugs ever. Um, so let's talk about Satomi. She's coming back, and I know. she was. The, the love story from mm-hmm. last season, and she was a Buddhist, and it seems like she's sort of the leader of this pack who's teaching them the uh, the mantra that helps mm-hmm. that pack control their shifting. Wait, what do you mean the love story? Well, she was the one who sort of threw the the fire. Do you remember last at season Reese. at Reese? At Reese. But yeah. like, it wasn't because she was in love with them. It was because... She was angry at the white, like, at yeah. the Americans. Yeah, I just meant that uh, for some reason when right, I think of Reese, right, 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 I just yeah. think of the love, love story. story. Yeah, mm-hmm. but that was with, like, Kira's mom. Yeah, Kira's yeah. mom. Yeah. So yeah. Tommy burns him. Yeah. Yes, oh, exactly. She's the one that throws the yeah, um, yeah. Um, alcohol bottle. One of my favorite episodes. That yeah. flashback episode. So that good. was amazing. Did you work on that set? Mm-hmm. Mm, such oh, an, yeah. It was such a great set. Well, what uh, was a bit of trivia. Yes, please. Uh, yeah. The sewer set where Kate meets Peter mm-hmm. is actually the World War II tunnel. Where they are oh having the, the sword fight. Yeah. That was our wow. set piece from that. Yeah, That's that really makes sense. Cool. That makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so, if bitten, you must learn control. But if you're born a werewolf, then I guess you already know how to control it more so, is what they were saying. Well, but those. Well, but uh, doesn't he have the Triskele and he's trying yeah, to learn how mm-hmm. to control it in the thing? Yeah. And he yeah. says, Why can't I? Because I was born. And he says something. So what's implied in that is that Derek was born a werewolf, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Right. Well, that, you know, it's funny. I, I, when I first read that, I thought, we've never really addressed that. <laughs> that uh, all these people were bitten, but not the Hales. So yeah. how do you get born a werewolf? Do you have to have werewolf babies? <laughs> Oh, yeah. you have to be like a werewolf mating with. Her. I don't know. I'm just speculating. We, I mean, we did see his mom. <laughs> yeah. We saw his mom, uh, a few, like in the early stages, as like a full werewolf. Oh, the wolf day. Yes. That was a great day too. <laughs> the wolf is a, the real wolves are amazing. Really? What's it like to work with them on set? They're um, they're frightening looking, <laughs> but yeah. they are very well trained. Wow. So mm-hmm. No, you can tell. Um, so. These, this Buddha pack, they don't want to be found, but then when we do find them, they're sort of all dead, it looks like. And Brayden is the only one that's that sticks her arm up out of this pack that's at the lookout where they were all hiding. So why was Brayden there, do you think? I was just going to ask you that question. <laughs> I, I, uh, maybe she killed them all. Maybe Brayden's a benefactor. No. I mean, yeah, she, no, she wouldn't do anything people. for money. She there, said that early on. Yeah. And there are some people like online who have talked about Brayden being the benefactor. I mean, it could be because we see, you know, they're all dead, but maybe she poisoned them, but they also attacked her in the process. So, yeah, she could be the benefactor. 
maybe. Mm-hmm. Or she could be someone working now for the benefactor because it looks like she just takes job for job, whoever will pay her yeah. the most. So if the benefactor is shooting out all these millions right. of dollars, maybe she's like, I'll kill a pack of werewolves for millions That's of true. dollars. So maybe she was there. And what was she doing there? Why is she there? I, you know, yeah. I saw that scene and I, because I, uh, uh, we were, you know, frantically trying to sort of get the woods set up and like uh, get ready for the mat shot, but I'd forgotten that she, that's how he finds her. That's how they hook mm-hmm. up, isn't yep. it? Yeah. That is. So I want to get into a little interview with you before we talk about our predictions. <laughs> so I believe I asked you last time, but just to remind the fans, like, what was it from your childhood that led you, do you think, into becoming a production designer? Were you setting up scenes with your friends when you were younger and sort of doing films and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. Did you work on plays? What do you think it was? It, uh, well, I've been, uh, I draw. Mm-hmm. I've been drawing all my life, mm-hmm. and that's how I, uh, I'll show you. Oh, this would be fun. Yay. Like this. yay. But this is, uh, oh, wow. Little, you just carry uh, that with you? Bit. Yeah. What do I have in here? Oh, well, these are, oh, wow. these are for something else. They're, oh, they're wow. ships. But I usually keep a sketchbook uh, mm-hmm. for all the Team Wolf stuff. And it's really cool. I didn't know what to do with that. I thought maybe I would, you know, how can anybody really grow up and be a painter or be an mm-hmm. artist? And mm-hmm. what I wanted to do was draw comic books. Mm-hmm. I wanted to move to New York and draw Spider Man. Oh. And I actually wrote Stan Lee when I was a teenager, <laughs> and he wrote me this really nice letter, which I wish to God I could find. Oh. And, uh, and he what said, did it say? It said, uh, when you grow up, kid, come to New York, and we'll see what we can wow. do for you. <laughs> How old were you when you I wrote was, this I was to 13, him. I think. Wow. You know, did you send him that. like some of your work at I that did. point? Of course I did. I sent him <laughs> Spider-Man and James Bond, and uh, I liked monsters. I grew up like uh, loving werewolves, and oh, uh, wow. or The Wolfman was actually one of my favorite movies. Wow. Uh, so so funny did you end up works. contacting him when yeah, you were of did age? Did you go back? No, I didn't. What happened was I got bitten by the acting bug when I was oh. in high school. And so I wanted to be an actor and I, I got involved in theater and mm. I studied theater and then I had a teacher who said, oh, you could be a designer but I cannot tell you that about your acting. <laughs> And oh, uh, gotcha. yeah, it was hard, but you know, Aww. sometimes that's hard to hear. <laughs> have you met Stan Lee since? Uh, no, I have not. But uh, I feel like this meeting needs to cool. happen. Uh, I know, it, too. That would be awesome. Do you still want to draw comics? Oh, I do, yes. Actually, I would love to uh, write a graphic novel. And but I have tried, and mm-hmm. I've tried to start it, and that takes serious commitment. I mean, yeah. you have to sit at the table. Ten or twelve hours a day. Wow! And those those guys who draw the comics are just there now. There's so much talent, and there's mm-hmm. so much wonderful stuff out mm-hmm. there. And I, I would like to visit that again, but it would probably be, I don't know. Alan Moore is like one of my heroes, oh, and cool. so if you look at uh, you know any, anything from Watchmen to From Hell, have you ever seen From Hell? No, I don't think I have. I, I'll write it down. From <laughs> Hell? You've never seen From Hell with I don't Johnny think Depp? So. Oh, you got to check it out. Okay, I'm writing it down uh, right now. It's on my to-do list. (laughs) But uh, but then in graduate school, I I uh, uh, had a production designer come and visit the school, Mm. and I thought. And where did you go to graduate school? I went to Yale School of Drama. Wow. So you. It wasn't my grades, man. I'm telling you, it wasn't. (laughs) So you didn't listen to the acting teacher, and you went for an MFA at Yale anyway. I did, but in, in in design. And oh, I see. oh, I see. Oh, I see. Okay. Right. But there was Got no it. program for film. So wow. I moved to New York, and I lived in New York for a while, and I got on a show, and the show came to L.A., and... And I you did, stayed. too. I just stayed, yes. So wow. I've been here for a while. What show was that, the first show that you were working on? Uh, Digstown. Oh, it's cool. a boxing movie with Lou Gossett and James Woods. Oh, nice. Nice. Didn't very do very fun. well at the box office, but I'm very proud of it. So. Yeah, <laughs> you should be. And well, hey, you're in L.A. Exactly. It got you to where it you got are. got you so. to L.A. So what's one of your favorite memories on set so far? Oh, my favorite memory was the lake house. The Such scene where scene. he's, uh, I storyboarded the little scene where he's p- picking the music. I forget what it is, the, mm-hmm. the AT&T program or something that he's like yes. choosing the song and they're yes. dancing. Yes. And when I first, when we, when the lake house came up, uh, we were trying to figure out how to do it. Mm-hmm. And my construction coordinator found a pond liner. And what it is is a giant 40 foot by 50 foot piece of rubber. 
that you, that you put down in a field and you can uh-huh. make an instant pond. Right. So we built a pond on oh, stage. Wow. Which is only like, like three, six inches deep. Yeah, yeah, like six inches deep. Uh, but Russell, uh, the director, uh, when I first pitched it to him, he said, oh, man, if it were the music video and it were the 80s, I'd do it in a heartbeat, but I just don't know. And I walked onto set and he set up the moon and he set it right behind them and made mm-hmm. it like massive in the front and then shot mm-hmm. right into it. And the moon was like a four foot, you know, plastic cutout <laughs> that we, wow. we hung up on a string and we shot a light onto. <laughs> and it, you know, it it's, looked it's, gorgeous. It's such a great moment with him. So dancing. realistic. I'm very proud of that. So. It was kind of like a music video out of the 80s, kind of had yeah. that feel to it. We the wanted whole to show push the style. Yeah. yeah. You know. I love it. Oh, yes. And then a lot of that, I think a lot of that comes from Russell. He yeah. has a big influence on that. Mm-hmm. We love Russell. He's yeah. been on here a few times oh, he with us. Oh, yeah. He's awesome. I, he's, he's awesome. Everyone's awesome. You guys are all so cool. Yeah. It is uh, the coolest group of people I have yeah. ever worked with. Yeah, that's totally. what everybody says. That's, 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 that's what everybody that's, says. All, all of them. That's what They're I'm great. saying. Is like, how do how does MTV, how does Jeff, who is it that attracts all of these amazing people? I think people? Jeff is such a nice person, you know, oh, that, yeah. you know, these people definitely want to gravitate. He's a beacon for good people. He's a beacon <laughs> for good people, yes. Uh, so are you working on other projects right now, like side projects or something else that you can tell us about? Well, I can tell you, I just got the screen pilot. Wow. So you're going to be production designing for the screen screen pilot. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. I hope that gets picked up. That'd be so cool. It will be very interesting. You know, it's very exciting. Like, Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. you know, it's all still very formative and early on, but Mm -hmm. there's nothing like it on television. I mean, there's sort of... Yeah, I guess maybe Hannibal, or you get like Bates Motel, but mm-hmm. there's no slasher TV show. Right. That's true. Really cool. Oh my gosh, I'd be so scared to watch it. Yeah, I would. It should be ultra <laughs> scary, too. It's gotta Especially be. with oh you as the production designer. <laughs> Let's yeah. go ahead and roll into predictions. Ooh. And now, you're after Buzz TV. What's a prediction? Prediction. Well, it seems like next week they're quarantined at the high school. It seems like they're infected. The coach has some sort of infection. Mm. And the Lydia's mom kind of shuts down the high school, and they all are quarantined in there until they can figure out what's going on. Mm-hmm. So, And, and Lydia, uh, I think it's Stalinsky that asks Lydia, is someone going to die? And she's like, yes. So What? Yeah. Wait, say that again? Stalinsky uh-huh. asked Lydia if someone's going to die because she's a banshee and she right. can predict death, and she said yes. So apparently someone's going to die next week. Lydia oh God, is you, hardly ever wrong. Do you yeah. think it's Derek? I hope not, because but the coach is in there. He's the one that's, like, passed out on the desk. But what if, like, what if, like... You can't kill the coach, I though. I know. Come on. I don't want to. I want him to be a werewolf. Wouldn't that just be amazing? He'd be, like, the most comical werewolf around. Is he getting sick because he's supernatural? Maybe. What if Derek gets sick from the vi- disease he and could. because he's becoming a human, like, there his immune go. system is just so susceptible. Could be. Like, he dies. Not, not actually from... A supernatural death, but just a human, real human death. I think that would make Mm -hmm. sense. That Mm -hmm. would be cool. How sad, though. Yeah, that'd be really sad. But hopefully, I mean, Scott says he's not going to let anybody else die, so I think he'll find a way to save everyone, like he says. Okay. Um, Jeff said that Styles and Malia have a rocky road ahead because of a secret about Malia's parents. So I think we're going to find out who Malia's mother is maybe later on this season. Mm Hmm. Um, and what do you think? Do you have any other predictions, June? Well, um, Jackie Campbell on YouTube also said that possibly Duke Halion could be the benefactor. I thought mm. that was very interesting because we know him and, like, you yeah. know, he got his sight back. He but I feel like away. after he got his sight back, he was, like, peaceful again and a great hippie guy that we saw he was back in the day. So yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> okay, fine. Oh, you don't like uh, him I being like, the benefactor? No. Oh. Scratch I like, that. Scratch I, that. I, I, like that, I like the fact that now that he can see again, he kind of understands the world and is at peace. Mm. <laughs> he, he's, he's got his own Buddha pack. That he's like yeah, go yeah. I'd be fine with that. Well, thank you so much Cheers. for joining yeah. us, thank Rusty. So much, Rusty. This has been so much fun. We still have to come on set and visit you, so let I me know. know. Yes, you do. Yes, when that you guys start up again, because I don't want to get spoiled. 
like any spoilers. So if we could come maybe like the first day, we won't get any spoils <laughs> yeah. that way. So let us know. Um, thanks, you guys, for tuning in. You can find me at Cinematic Escape on Twitter or Cinematic Escape is my blog. June, where can we find you? You guys can find me at Miss underscore June Lee. And you guys can also check out my blog, Amaze, A-M-A-Z TV. And where can we follow you, Rusty? I know we gave a shout out to your Twitter earlier. Uh, yeah, the Twitter, Roscoe E59, but mm -hmm. also uh, my website, uh, RustySmith.biz. Nice. Awesome. I like Yay. that. Thanks, you guys. Have a great week, and we'll see you next Tuesday. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later. <laughs>